anaconda choke, what I need is I need to work this arm all the way across his body. In order to do that, I'm going to go two on one on this arm. So I'm going to go palm on the elbow, and then I'm going to drop my right shoulder, and I'm going to go and double up on this arm, this time on the tricep. So with this grip, I'm going to force his arm across the body. But the problem right now is if I try to force it across the body, it's pretty heavy because I'm laying on him and his elbow is on the mat. So like I try to force this across, and it's like really tight. So one way you can make this light is just drive in and pick the person up just a little bit. Just a little bit of a pickup here, and then I can stuff that arm across. That makes my job a lot easier. Now I'm going to continue dropping my shoulder on the right so I can feed as much slack through on the side as possible. And I want to see my hand come out this side under his armpit. And once I can see that, I'm going to make a figure four grip. This hand, the thumb connected to the rest of my hand, is going to go to my bicep near my elbow. And then this hand is going to come as close to my face as possible all the way up here, and I'm going to hold his back. So I've got my grip set for the choke. This is pretty good. I'm going to execute a roll in order to get him on the side I want, but I don't want to do it with my head where it is right now, because if I do, he's going to roll over my head and it's going to suck. Okay? So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take my ear and I'm going to hide it here on his lap muscle near his armpit. I'm going to go from here to here. And now when I execute my roll, it's not going to hurt my head. It's going to be much smoother. So not here, but here. You're going to see me take this post out. I'm going to remove this leg, execute a very aggressive roll. And now he's on the side that I want him on. Being on this side makes it much easier for me to compress his head and his neck to his chest, okay? So I got a tight grip, good body positioning. I'm already gonna start my squeeze. I'm bringing my elbows together and then crunching everything down to my chest. So I start that squeeze, and then I'm gonna start walking close to Joe. I'm gonna walk, to, I'm gonna walk close to him as fast as I possibly can because most of the time he knows that I wanna get close and he's gonna be running away from me as I'm trying to get close to him. So my ultimate goal would be to get close to him and hook his leg so he can't run away from me anymore. But the reality is usually it's a race into the choke without the leg hooked. And most of the time, if your squeeze is good, you know where you're going and you go fast, you're gonna win this battle. So I'll go from here, initiate my squeeze, walk close, bow my chest, and get my tap. One thing I would definitely recognize is the fact that there are certain body type matchups where it is nearly impossible, even after you pass the arm, to get this locked up flush. Like, it can just be tough sometimes. Maybe your partner is like really stocky, really muscular. Maybe you are, maybe both of you are, and it's hard to get that lock, okay? Or sometimes the person will hide this arm like around your waist, so he brings it around here. Now it's like, it's a tall order to pass this, right? So in either of these situations, either he hides it around the waist or it's here on the inside and I just can't seem to get it locked up, I'm just gonna go for an arm and guillotine instead. So what I'm gonna do is instead of, uh, instead of creating a figure four grip here, I'm just gonna go take this hand and I'm gonna think about bringing this like more like wrist watch on the trachea rather than like really deep feet. So I'm actually gonna retreat this a little bit and I'm gonna bring wrist watch to the trachea. This is gonna now fish through a little farther, but I'm still holding classic guillotine grip, okay? So I've got my non-choking hand over my choking hand, and now I've got a really good bite on his neck for a different type of choke. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna think about bringing my hands up really far to my sternum, so my hands are gonna come up like this, up the sternum, close to my chin if possible, then I'm gonna close both of my elbows down, okay? So this squeeze is very specific. If I am too high, like we talked about before, and I try to do that, I try to bring my hands up to my chin through my sternum, I'll never get a good bite on the neck. But if I shift down like this, like again, shoulder closer to the, to the back of the neck, this is much better. I bring my hands up, close my elbows tight. Now I'm gonna take a big step to the outside and I'm gonna sit to my inside hip and shelf my right shin across his waistline. So I'm gonna do this nice and slow. Big step, make sure that squeeze is perfect, shelf the shin across the waistline, and I fall at an angle. If he flattens me onto my back, good, walk me square, this is bad for me. So I want to use my inside foot to keep him pushed off toward this side so I can, I can stay on that nice angle, okay? Now this leg is over the back, clamping down, hopefully to help prevent him from rolling forward and out. So 
I can't emphasize enough, try to bring your hands all the way up past your sternum to your chin, close your elbows. You wanna create a big bend in your body toward the guillotine side. So toward my right side, I wanna arc and bend my body. And then, what's very counterintuitive, I don't wanna stretch him away and straighten up because his head will actually start to slip out. Instead, I wanna do a crunch. I wanna crunch up tight into a ball as I execute that squeeze. Oh, that sucks, yep. So here are all the points to this that are, that are kind of counterintuitive, okay? Number one, bringing the hands up toward your chin, closing your elbows down, and then after you've done that, staying in that angle where you're on your inside hip, and then I'm gonna crunch to the side, and then I'm gonna crunch forward like I'm doing a sit-up. My hands are clasped like this. What I'm about to do is flip my choking hand from facing, palm facing me, to palm up. And now I've made a new gable grip, okay? So we go from here, I flip my grip, and then I take my little wrestle shot around the side, change the way my hips are facing, and now this is my threading arm. It's no longer my choking arm, it threads through, and I clamp my form down across the back of his neck for a three-quarter Nelson position. This is a really nice control position for me. So think of this as like your forearms are like a pair of scissors on the person's neck. I don't want this one floating out here because he can loop his head out. See, I want to keep this flush and parallel with my other forearm, pinching tight on the neck. So I'm not perpendicular to him. What I want to do is use this grip to turn him onto his side. So I'm going to raise my bottom arm and I'm going to hammer down with this top scissor blade and I'm going to turn him. Now, as I turn him, I want to follow this shoulder with my chest. So I don't just turn him and sit here because he's just going to move away from me. I'm going to turn him and my sternum follows that shoulder so I walk with him into side control. Okay. Clear so far? Not bad, right? Okay, so here we are. I'll use this position to wear out a stronger person's neck. So what people do, they get pancaked to their side like this. What does he want to do? He wants to get back up. So I'll just stay here. I'll just keep flipping him over, keep tenderizing his neck, keep following him until he gives up on trying to get back up to his knees. Once he does that, I'm going to take this hand, I'm going to stuff the crown of his head down, and I'm going to start thinking about dropping this inside shoulder to thread this arm through deeper. Now, if at any point in time I take my hand off here, and I feel like he starts to arch his head really hard. I just go back to my three-quarter Nelson and I keep tenderizing his neck. But eventually it's gonna get worn out. I'll be able to stuff the crown of the head, drop my left shoulder down and thread this through nice and deep. How deep do you wanna go? I would say about as deep as you can, okay? If you can drop this shoulder and you can get the crook of your elbow flush with the person's neck, that's fine. It's gonna be a very tight choke and you're not gonna to have to squeeze very hard. Some people actually prefer to have their forearm, the blade of their forearm on the neck because it produces a different type of choke. It's okay too, that's kind of preferential and it depends who you're choking, what their body type is, what your body type is, okay? So once we get to this position, just like the anaconda, our objective is to lock this figure four grip. So left hand goes to my right bicep, right hand is gonna go high on the back, close to my head. Now I really like the sprawl finish, which means I'm gonna squeeze my elbows together into my chest, just like we do for the rear naked choke, just like we did for the anaconda choke, and then I'm gonna get my knees off the mat, melt all my weight into his shoulder and chest, take a big deep breath in, and get my tap, okay? Very low energy expenditure for me. Some people like to sit their hips through, face the person and run close. I prefer just to finish in the sprawl. You can get to this point against, I would say, pretty much any person of any build you can get here. But the problem becomes like if the person is really stocky, really muscular up top, or you have shorter arms or both, you're gonna have trouble pushing the crown of the head, dropping the shoulder, and getting to this true figure four position. This is gonna be difficult, okay? But this you can do. You can keep this gable grip, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the head in super tight. I'm gonna keep this scissoring motion going with my gable grip and my forearms. But what I'm gonna do is something that's gonna feel a little awkward at first. You're just gonna to have to go with it. I'm going to roll to my right side, dropping my right shoulder and hip to the mat, but keeping this grip the entire time. So like I'm here, just at that point before I push the head and feed the figure four, okay? With the gable grip, and I go, you know what? This is not gonna happen. I'm not gonna be able to hook that grip up on this person. So I keep my three-quarter Nelson. I fall to my right hip and shoulder. 
and then his head is trapped right in my solar plexus under my sternum. From this position, I'm gonna pull my hands up toward my chin, close my elbows, and then I'm gonna walk close to Joe as I execute my squeeze, I get my tap, okay? It's a neck crank, it's a choke, it's just absolute hell. We're here, get to this position, I don't think I can do this. Just person's too big on top, I'm, my arms are too short, or both, okay? So just make sure that this doesn't stay like, uh, like, like in a position with a hole where it's gonna slip off his head. Keep those scissor blades parallel, close together, and then fall to your outside shoulder and hip. But try to think about keeping the crown of the person's head right in your sternum, solar plexus area. Bring your hands up toward the throat, close your elbows, slowly walk close to the body as you take a big deep breath and arch your hip, and you'll get your fit.